Look, you guys. So it's morning time. I'm so fucking bloated. Like, anyways, you guys, I got my coffee right here. And I'm ready to go upstairs. But before I do that, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and prep some food. So I'm just going to show you quickly how I'm going to make my swanny fillets um, <clears throat> boil for at least an hour because I don't care whether they're pre-cooked or not. Whatever it is. And I think these come raw anyway. They're not pre-cooked. And I don't buy swatting from the bag. I never do. But I really don't see no reason, you know, like, honestly, everything that we eat to a certain extent is contaminated anyway. It's super early, you guys. I'm so tired. Like, I don't know why I'm such a drag right now. But I'm just gonna, I don't, I don't want to do this without showing you guys this. So, right. I went and got some bag swatting a while ago. I'm gonna do grocery today. You guys are gonna come with me. But I do want to prep this so that way I'm not hungry by noon. I'm not hungry by two. I don't think I'm gonna do grocery until like later on, maybe three or four. So I need some food. Uh, yeah, and when it's time to get hungry, I need to eat. I need to eat clean. So yeah, you guys, I told you there was a 20 day countdown. You guys are probably gonna be like, what? What are you talking about? But anyways, before we do all of this, all I have right here is water inside of the pot. And that's it, it's on high. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this vinegar <clears throat> and put it in there. Um, I'm gonna put some when the fish is out too. And that's just usually what I use when boiling my fish. Slash meat, we'll talk about that. So yeah, what I'm gonna do right now is just make sure I wash my hands before anything. Yeah, and I got soap in here, but since these are bags, <clears throat> they're not getting contaminated even more. <laughs> if it would be, right? <laughs> we're gonna talk that way. So it's just really what's going on. But anyways, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut these open. There's a little bit of soap on the bag, and I don't want any soap on the fish. Even though whatever's on it should be dead in due time because of the hot, scorching water. So anyways, you guys, I am removing the swahi from the plastic. Mm, it looks so clean. Wow, and it smells clean, too. How? Wow. It smells very clean. It smells no fish. It doesn't smell fishy at all. But I'm going to go ahead and just... Wipe them a little bit. Go ahead and run some clean water through it. Some tap water. <laughs> through it and just dip them in. Just like that. That easy. That simple. Um, this bag only came with five of them. I have two in there and there's two in here. Um, I don't even. I, I think that just might be a little too much. But um, <clears throat> no lie. I let it defrost. Hold on, you guys. I let it defrost. Um, ever since two nights ago. Which, uh, obviously everything's in plastic, so nothing should be bad. But I let it defrost, not in the microwave, but in the um, fridge. And it does say, allowed to thaw in the fridge and or microwave. So, I did let it thaw in the fridge, but I don't know if you guys know anything about uh, if you defrost or if you thaw out, do not put back in the freezer vibes. I think that's with shrimp and other seafoods. I don't know if that's the case with this one. And I try to look, um, I try to look, throughout this bag to see if it says, you know, do not refreeze, but I don't see it anywhere, which is a little, oh, it says it right here. Oh, shh, you see, hold on, you guys, wait a minute. I was just telling you about this, you see? Watch, whoa, ho, ho. see, I didn't see it. I seen all of the chemicals that they're trying to, you know, say that's in here, all the sodium sulfate and all that other crap, just to let it last so long, but, Look at this. Look at it says right, right here in the handling instructions. Do not refreeze. So let's read what it says. <clears throat> it says remove fillets from packaging, then thaw out in covered dish under refrigeration for four to six hours. It is recommended to cook seafood products immediately after thawing. Damn. Well, I let it thaw for two days, so there's already that risk. And then it does say, "Do not refreeze." Every effort is to make that. Every effort is made to ensure that the fillets are boneless. However, some bones may be presented. Ugh. Bro, I'm just so over a lot of the shit that we're eating. I'm so over it. Like so, 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 so over it. And shout out to my Annie House of Hair for supplying me with the cat so I can get my braids. And we'll talk about that later. 
I'm so tired again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cook all of this because if it's bad, it's gonna all be bad together. There's no way I can keep this, no way I can refreeze it, no way I can throw, let it thaw out again. So that's just a little food for thought, you guys. If you guys have, this one was a little, this one had a little substance on it because I kind of felt a little, a little bit of some, some type of um, oil on it. Like, some kind of substance is what's on this. Okay. Well, food for thought, you guys. If you didn't know, when it comes to seafood and thawing out fish, thawing out salmon, um, any kind of shrimps, or any other fish of that nature, a lot of people do not know. This is something that I have been, I mean, my mom said this a while ago, but something I didn't realize until 2019, when reading these packages stating, do not refreeze after thawing out. And that's really important. That's really, 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 really important because obviously you can get sick. And one of the easiest ways to get sick in this country is seafood meat, fruits, I mean, er everything. But the easiest way to kill yourself and your family is with food. Okay, okay, okay. So, let me go ahead and throw all this away, you guys. Because a clean cook is a good cook. A good cook is a clean cook. Never forget that. My mama don't play. Mama doesn't play about that. Now, always remember, when you throw some of them bags in that um trash, that trash gotta go out tonight, baby, because those type of things, they create little tiny bugs. They create bugs inside of the trash, maggots, however you call it. I don't know what it is. Fungi, this, that, that, and the third. Just get it out of the house. Even if you got to put it on your front porch, get it out of the house. Um, don't let it sit in there for a couple hours. Like, not even. Like, don't even let it sit for a couple hours. That's when you just have to get it. Get That people try to escape it. <laughs> okay, that's, that's not the way to do things here. Let me get you guys. So, um, the video was only for showing you guys how I am gonna let this thing boil for an hour or two um, while I go handle some business upstairs in my office and get some of these orders out, you guys. Um, yeah, so right now I have this on level eight and it's gonna stay, I'm actually gonna put it on level between four and five because I am gonna go upstairs and I do think that I'm gonna put it out. Well, the water's gonna disappear on its own. So I'm gonna leave it like that. This is good. So we're gonna leave it at a low, moderate um, heat. I'm gonna do, I, well, I placed it on four. So four out of 10 is literally like no, nothing's gonna really happen. But um, this is usually how I do my thing. So I know um, when it's time to run downstairs and shit like that. But <clears throat> I do not recommend for people to put food here and not be ready to take care of it, okay? So when you got food in the fridge, I mean food in the stove, pay attention to it. All right, you guys, so, um, let me put this here so I can get my coffee off. I'm like so tired. It's just such a drag right now for some reason, but anyways, you guys, let's just put this here quickly. Oh, look, I was making a good this. <laughs> yeah, that's Air, cool, where it should be. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the vinegar because I didn't put it after, so we're gonna put a little bit more now. Mm. I love the smell of vinegar on anything that I'm cooking, it just smells clean. It really does. It smells clean and it smells yummy because I like salt and vinegar chips. I like the, um, I used to like the hot, hot sausage, all of that, the whole, the whole thing, the whole shebang. Shout out to Yeti if you guys don't have Yeti cups. And Yeti did not sponsor this video, but shout out to Yeti. And then you guys know I gotta have my chocolate chip cookies. But anyways, you guys, so it's morning time. I'm still tired. I'm still trying to recoup and get my life together, you guys. Um, I miss you. The video is very really just straight to the point how I boil my uh, my swai in the morning. Let it sit and I probably will follow up before I close the video out. And we're gonna drop a shit load of videos. I'm not even gonna talk about it. I'm just gonna be about it. And there's just so much to announce. So I'll just let the next video upload right now so you can talk about it. Um, if you guys haven't visited my website at www.rockygogani.com, there's so many things to offer. I have so much programs there. Um, weight loss, I have for weightlifting, I have abdominal, I have a straight glue guide for your booty. I have um, products that I use for my girdles. I use the body guard girdles, but I use the butt garments. I always use that. 
Um, and then other things, ab massager, there's gonna be creams uploaded, etc. So you guys, if you haven't visited the website, go ahead and visit the site. And the next video is gonna upload that way. I can explain where I've been, what has been going on, why I've been so busy, why am I so tired, and why I've been AWOL, what we're gonna do, what direction we're gonna go in, and what you guys can expect, okay? So, all right, you guys, so, I got some oil here, a little bit of coconut oil, getting ready. It's like, you know, so the fish is already done. And I'm gonna show you guys the fish in a second, but I'm gonna just show you how I'm going to prep the pan. Like I said, I only have, um, I already have coconut oil in there. I'm gonna chop these up real quick. I'm gonna use some, uh, what do they call it again, ginger. And I might use some squash and zucchini might, just because what I want to do is, I want to, I made some lentil beans, so I kinda wanna do, like I don't know if you guys ever had the Panera Bread lentil soup. So what I want to do is I want to have the fish, the swahi, but what I want to do is have some lentil beans, some kale, and a fish. I want it to be like something like a stew, maybe a little bit spicy. Um, yeah, so that's just gonna be my, my choice of how I want to eat it. So uh, you guys, if you don't know already, I usually always cut, I used to always cut uh, my peppers, onions, whatever it is with smaller knives, but if you get a bigger knife, literally it just like makes it five times easier. Like, it just makes it so much easier. Um, I like the button. Yeah, cut it up and it's already ready. So we're going to chop these up real quick. Let's go ahead and do it. And I do not recommend that you have your hair all over the place when you're making food, especially when you're making food for other people. Make sure you put your hair up because your hair will be in the damn food, okay? Okay. And that's what you don't want. That's actually gross. So it's a little too high. Lock that down a little bit because you don't want the pan to burn just with the oil. It's so like actually gross. So yeah, before touching your food, make sure you wash your hands. I'm sure you guys already know that, but a lot of the times people don't really know that. And you don't want to cross-contaminate anything. Now cross-contamination is like something that people do all day, every day. Like they literally do not know the difference of cross-contamination. I know you guys are probably sick of this Timmy Turner style video. <laughs> But I'm actually just trying to get it done while getting it done and still trying to record for you guys. So you gotta bear with me. And like I said, we're gonna talk about a lot of things, but this is not the video for that. I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like, are you serious? Like how long is it gonna take you? Just give me a minute. Trust me, the best things in life you gotta wait for, okay? Um, you're probably like really rocking. Yeah. So anyways, a crop contamination is pretty intense. People don't know about it. Um, and what I mean by that is like, for example, with the fish, right? Obviously, we already spoke about this not being able to be frozen and seafood's just really, really, really like particular. Um, I know I have a friend who actually cooks with gloves. Um, that's just because she's so on point with it. And these nails kind of, they don't make it easy to cook with gloves, but um, shortly you'll see me start cooking with gloves. You'll see like, I'm just gonna be very, very, very detailed when it comes to my food because you gotta understand if, you, if you're gonna be detailed with anything, um, let it be with whatever coincides with your temple. Obviously, like when the body shuts down, nothing else matters. Doesn't matter how rich you are, where you are, what's your environment, what you want to do, what you aspire to be. When the body breaks down, the body breaks down, okay? So, you just really want to put a lot of effort towards what you're consuming. Pay attention to even the water that you uh, drink, everything. But people are now realizing these for hills and all these other waters, spring waters have rocks in them. You know what I mean? Uh, no alkaline whatsoever. Uh, all kinds of chemicals and stuff. So anyways, this video is not gonna be based off of that, but I am saying that cross-contamination is so um, out there and severe. Like, you have to understand, you can't even put raw fish on your cutting boards. They don't want you to put raw fish on your cutting boards, on your hands, um, on your utensils. And if you do, wash immediately. Or do not put your raw fish on your cutting board, on your countertop, get your hands touching it, because as soon as you touch that raw fish and you touch this, that's cross-contamination. That's cross-contamination. And these bugs, they stay alive. Why do you think they don't want you to put on, especially my wooden board? You see, so it's gonna be so much easier for them to live and to stay alive here, especially by rinse it with water. Then now we're talking about germs and algae and fungus and everything coming together and creating its own fucking animals. And then this shit might happen, and this end up might having, uh, it might end up having termites and I don't even know, like, you know what I mean? So you have to think about those things and some people were like, oh wait, you're doing too much. No, I'm not, I'm doing what I should be doing. So for my yeah, moving forward, let's go ahead and um, put that in there. 
and we're gonna go ahead and wipe this down, and then we're gonna go ahead and use these, and I'm gonna wash my hands, okay? Say, oh, well, yeah, you could worry about cross-contamination on your food and all that stuff, but you can easily go outside and get hit by a bus. Okay, let that be the ratio. Like, oh, yeah, Rocky, okay, I'm gonna put a lot of onto what I'm doing and what I'm eating. Yeah, and then go outside and get hit by a bus on my lunch break, so, you know? So anyways, you guys, we got ginger here. I'm gonna use the biggest piece, cause I ain't got no time. So I'm gonna go ahead and skin this bad boy. I'm not gonna use, but you gotta understand, you gotta keep the, um, you gotta keep it, keep the ginger, bro. It's close to a pound. Um, for it to have so much benefit to be that cheap, it just makes me question, like, is this really ginger, bro? You gotta understand, so this right here, you can use for so many things. My mom usually uses uh, the ginger, leftover ginger for water. She puts it in her tea. Like, she doesn't play any games with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and skin this, cause I wanna cut a couple, um, slices of ginger to put in the pot. It's gonna taste so good with the fish. Like, you gotta understand. And you do not have to use a lot of seasoning. No seasoning, literally. Like, I would just recommend the basic ones that I always use. I use the exact same seasoning every single time. All I use is a little bit of lemon pepper and red pepper, crushed red peppers. That's it. I don't use anything else. And I don't even use Mrs. Dash. Like, I just use regular lemon pepper and red crushed pepper. That's it, nothing else. But ginger is so good for so many reasons, you guys. We're gonna really get into this. And when I say there's gonna be better angles, um, better everything, you know, we've spoken about this. Just in the YouTube culture, everybody promises more and more. So just the promising alone is so cliche. I just rather not speak about it and just be about it. Um, and that's it. So I'm gonna do, like we all say, less announcements and more action. But I'm just telling you. So yeah, you guys, look at that. Looks like a piece of potato. I could just eat it. Mmm, ginger. Deliciousness. So yeah, guys, it's a speed up. We don't got all day for this, okay? See how the pan is looking right now. Okay, so we're just letting that sit and saute. I'm gonna put it up a little bit because obviously the fish is gonna go in there shortly, so. Yep. And let's just see. So, got my wooden fork. No cross-contamination. Ooh, this ginger smells so good. It looks like a french fry. Mm. It's really going, um, it's really been stripped. So that's a really good sign. That's usually the sign where obviously the fish or whatever it is that you're cooking, whatever meat you decide to cook is on, is done stripping from the fat. So, look at that. Mm -hmm. That makes like french fries. <laughs> Beware, do not eat that. Well, do eat it, it's done stripping from the fat. So, look at that. Mm -hmm. That looks like french fries. <laughs> Beware, do not eat that. Well, do eat it, please do. All right, you guys, so the pot is ready for the fish. My hands are washed. I already washed them. Alright you guys, so we're gonna go ahead and just pick them up one by one and, oh, and they're gonna break. And that's okay, I'm okay with them breaking. They're soft. So of course they're gonna break. I already seen that coming. And that's okay. I'm gonna still keep them fillet style if I can. If they end up turning into like shredded fish, so be it. Um, that I knew was gonna happen, obviously, because I decided to boil my fish. Um, now, when the fish is not boiled, that's when, I mean, obviously, you're gonna go from just packaging to filleting the fish, but I don't play about meat, and we're gonna have that conversation very shortly, but I don't play about this type of food. I, it's gonna be boiled, period. If the meat's not boiled, if whatever type of protein isn't boiled, I don't want it. And that's why it's so hard to eat out. It's really, really hard. And now it's gonna be 10 times more difficult to eat out. But yeah, you guys, so the pieces are here. They are all, you know, <laughs> they all fell apart, which is okay. That is protocol because I decided to boil my meat and I wouldn't want it any other way. That's just it. 
So look what's left, you guys. Just a little bit. I'm going to toss it in here. And it's just going to be delicious. Period. This is going to be so good. Well, this is going to... All right, you guys, so now that this is moving up like this, what I'm going to do is take my red crushed pepper, which is right here, crushed red pepper. This is usually, this is like literally what I use, just this and lemon pepper. And look, I gotta go buy more lemon pepper. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some crushed red pepper. Ooh, it's so good. Yes, and some lemon pepper. Not that much, it's literally not necessary at all. But you do have to understand that I have about three to five pounds of fish right here, so it has to be a good amount in a sense. And I'm just gonna let this sit real quick. I'm gonna let it sit real quick so that we, oh, I have to put a little bit. through this take these little tiny things out disgusting right and sometimes even you even see like good kale on it that you could like if i mean obviously if you're running low on kale you can just pull this just touch it straight from there clean that out but i'm just gonna just throw it away just because obviously i'm not, I'm not running out of kale so i'm gonna wash these right now this is gonna be the base of my soup um with the menthol i'm gonna put them in the fridge um i put some away i cooked them yesterday so I put some away, and I'm gonna show you what I put away. It's a little right there. Um, I bought these little green things, which is so, 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 so convenient. So I made this lentil, and I will make this lentil with you guys shortly. It's so delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and pour some. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pour a little bit of water. A little bit of water. This is alkaline water. It's the bottom, right? So, as you can see, it's not that much water, right? All right. And I'm gonna go ahead and one second stir up the lentil soup. This is what's left over from yesterday. And I wish I came up with this idea yesterday, so it would have been a big batch. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of base it at the bottom, base it at the bottom. I'm not gonna put too, 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 too much. Like that. And now what I'm gonna do is put it in the microwave because the lentil soup is not warm. And we're gonna wait. Lentil soup, wow, look at that. Water-based, this is very vegan. I made this yesterday, like I said, and I'll give you guys my recipe shortly because lentils are not easy to make. I got, got the kale, got the arugula in there, and now, for the best part, we're gonna leave it right there. So, this is how much is left, and this is enough for about three meals, maybe two nice ones. Um, and this, wow, bon appetit. Look at that, you guys. From the beginning to the end, you guys witnessed it all. Now, the food presentation could be better. This is raw, this is real, this is very much on the spot. You guys witnessed it all. And yeah, what do we have in here? We have the base, which is water. Everything you do, everything you consume should be based with water, water based. Based with water. We have the lentil beans from yesterday, leftovers. Leftovers are always fun, especially if you cook it yourself. 
So I'll give you guys a recipe on that soon. Then we have the arugula, you guys seen the kale, washed, ready to go. And then boom, the swahi fish that we cooked this morning, which is still morning, baby. And this right here, this entire meal only took about an hour and a half. And why? Because the hour was to let the swahi cook. You can see that it's not one piece because it broke down, obviously, because I need it to be cooked. I need it to be boiled. That's just the best way to eat it. How do we make the swahi fish? Remember, the base was just coconut oil, uh, the peppers of my choice, red peppers, which was the crushed red peppers, and the, um, the uh, uh, what do you call it, um, lemon pepper seasoning. I gotta take a bite right now. So let's go ahead and pray on it. All right, and let's just take a bite. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see if it's as good as it looks. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm -mm -mm. I need a real fork right now. Yeah, I know this tastes good. <laughs> oh my goodness. So healthy. Diabetics, please listen to me. I mean, if you have a high blood pressure, whatever, first know that it could be reversed. We won't talk about that. Two, get into it. Time for me to eat my soup this morning. Ah, we're gonna upload. I love you. And thank you for coming back to my channel, you guys. And if you are new, thank you for subscribing. I'm gonna give you 500 reasons why you should stick around. Remember, I do these videos for you guys.